Hey everybody, my name is Kara Ireland and I'm your TA for this semester and we're going to be closing out our course by talking about Black Lives Matter. Now this is something that has been in the news cycle for months now and everybody's talking about it, everybody's got an opinion, but what we're going to be doing today is taking a look at everything that we've done all semester, the terms and phrases that we've learned and also just the social movements that we've been talking about pulling it all together to have a, a, a discussion about Black Lives Matter. Now, I want to start off by saying that Black Lives Matter is simply an international movement, uh, an international social movement fighting racism, police brutality, and anti-black violence. And when I say anti-black violence, I don't mean, you know, assault or, you know, physical violence. Anti-black violence could be found in microaggressions and exclusionary legislation and this, that, and the third. Black Lives Matter as a whole has tasked itself with fighting police brutality and police brutality includes racial profiling and over-policing of certain neighborhoods and mass incarceration and all these things that um, disproportionately affect black people and don't affect other uh, races or groups as much. And the way that we're going to be talking about Black Lives Matter and the lens that we're going to be looking at it through is using vocabulary words such as social location and generational memory. So if we remember our social location is our race, class, gender, age, sexuality, religion, geographical location, any of these things that make our placement in the world unique to us because I mean people do share similarities and some of these social locations do overlap but overwhelmingly like we all have something that differs that makes us different than somebody else even in our own groups and by the end of this discussion I want you guys to be able to be able to engage a, dis a discussion about Black Lives Matter regarding the question how does my social location give me a bias toward or against Black Lives Matter? And I want to have like a really introspective and reflective thought about this before we even engage with it. And I'll start off by telling you what mine is. So we all have biases and whether those biases are good or bad, like, you know, kind of depends on the person, but my social location informs my biases towards any kind of social movement or political ideology or what have you. My social location is I'm a black woman. I am 22 years old. I grew up on the outskirts of Atlanta my, most of my life in the suburbs. Um, both my parents are college educated. I have, um, you know, just a lot of different things that would make me and my positionality in the world unique and it might differ a lot from yours. Now, because of my social location, I belong to three different marginalized groups, and that's black people, that's women, and there's also the LGBTQ community. My social location informs a lot of how my political um, ideology is shaped and also just my general day-to-day -to -day attitude toward um, you know, polarizing conversations. And Black Lives Matter has unfortunately become one of the most polarizing conversations uh, of our modern time because it has been so politicized and it's been just, you know, engorged with all this excess factors that don't really serve the purpose of what Black Lives Matter as a movement is trying to do. Black Lives Matter, like I said, is just dedicated to fighting racism, fighting police brutality, uh, confronting anti-black violence. So whatever that looks like, it depends. And when you're a part of a marginalized group, you implicitly understand some things that it may take others a little bit more explanation to get to the same understanding that you have. And that's what this conversation is intended to be today. Um, this is a safe space as a classroom. Like this is, there's no room for cancel culture or anything. Nobody's going to attack you over your opinion. But I do want you to be able to defend your opinion and to mold it with um, the things that we've been learning this semester. So using your social location, using your family's or your um, area's generational memory to be able to inform why you feel the way that you feel. 
for some, the immediate retort to Black Lives Matter is, well, all lives matter, and that's also the case. But let's go back and understand that Black Lives Matter was created in response to the shooting killing of Trayvon Martin in 2013 by George Zimmerman. Um, his freedom and the way that he walked without any kind of, you know, jail time or anything gave president gave precedence to the, the the phrase Black Lives Matter because if Trayvon Le if Trayvon Martin's life did matter, George Zimmerman should have served time for the crime that he committed. He murdered somebody, right? Now, if the roles were reversed, Trayvon Martin absolutely would have been jailed or um, you know punished for for his actions. And it just goes to show that there's a separate America and there's a separate rules a separate set of rules for um, black people in this country than it is for others. And when we say that Black Lives Matter, it's because continuously it's been shown that our lives have been dispensable in some kind of way. Uh, you can look at the protests that have been going on since the 1960s, the civil rights movement. Um, black people have been just requesting from larger institutions that there are sanctions in place to make sure that our lives are protected, that we are not um, ostracized from our communities, and that we also have the same rights and privileges as everybody else. So when you think of the people that are saying all lives matter in, re in retort to Black Lives Matter, think about their social location. Think about their experience with diversity. Think about their generational memories that are informing the way that they feel at this current point because nobody nobody's able to just form an opinion out of thin air everybody has some factors that are influencing how they believe or how they feel and everything has nuance like i said so the case for somebody who lives in rural georgia who is white who comes from a conservative upbringing, you know, religious household, that kind of stuff, they're likely not going to have the insight to understand what Black Lives Matter is advocating for because it seems to that perspective that what we're requesting is some sort of uh, special treatment or some sort of, you know, extra legislature protection and all this kind of stuff and just attention seeking which is really not the case but it is it can be backed up that the same people who were protesting in the streets counter protesting the civil rights movement in the 60s they had children those children had children and those ideologies and those sentiments and just misguided you know, ideas are passed down for generations. So the generational memory plus the social location informs, you know, their their positionality. And so when people want to criticize those who um, have dissent when it comes to Black Lives Matter, I think it's it's more beneficial to figure out where they're coming from and factor in, you know, their social location, their generational memory, and their current ideology and the things that are making them act and perceive things the way that they do because it's really not just a black and white situation everything has nuance and I'll keep I've said it before and I'll keep saying it and one of my favorite things is that these issues don't have to be so um, heavy and just weighed down with like rhetorical thought or anything like that like you can get a glimpse at this by looking at music or watching music videos such as Kendrick Lamar's All Right or Childish Gambino's This Is America or even uh, the 1975 Love It If We Made It like if you watch those videos the clips and the the uh, creative direction of the video plus the lyrics they all paint the same picture that there are two different set of rules for uh, black America versus the other America I think it's a pretty brilliant way to process generational traumas and current traumas and just trying to perceive life as it is and how it got to be there. And Black Lives Matter has actually been recognized as the largest civil rights movement in history.
because of the protests that spanned over borders and across oceans. And actually, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter, Opal Tometi, she says that Black Lives Matter is not a civil rights movement, it's a human rights movement. Because the things that they're asking for is literally just to validate the humanity of an entire race of people that have been brutalized and slaughtered and stereotyped and discriminated against. So in addition to everything that we've learned this semester, all the uh, videos and texts that we've read, there are lots of things that you can do to further educate yourself on the, divi the racial divide. Um, there's all kinds of race scholars, and using social media, there's all kinds of race scholars like Rachel Cargill, uh, Brittany Cooper, Mickey Kendall. They're all people who are making educational resources for people who want to learn more. So in addition to them um, and their posts on Instagram or Twitter or their books, you can watch documentaries such as 13th or movies um, like The Hate You Give and just other informative uh, media, visual media, such as like When They See Us. There's just so many things out there to you know, help paint the picture of Black Lives Matter and to further, you know, yeah, paint the picture. So to close this out, I think that I want you guys to really become introspective and think about how your social location is informing your current perception of the world, how your parents and your teachers and where you grew up influences how you think. Be honest with yourself and fi try to figure out which kind of biases that you hold and why you hold them. Is it because somebody else in, in your close circle holds those biases and you kind of adopted them as your own? Is it because you have certain experiences that combat or validate you know, what other people are saying? Is it because you, know, you read something once and it resonated with you? Like, figure out where your biases come from and then do some you know, self-reflection and try to figure out why you think about Black Lives Matter in the way that you do. And I'm really interested to hear what those um, reasons are. You guys have done a lot of good work this semester and we're at the end. So pat yourself on the back and have a great semester next year. Or if you're graduating, have a good graduation. Just enjoy yourself. I enjoyed talking to all of you guys.